Welcome to Activations with JJ Ascension Message. In this episode, we discuss the fatigue that is coming on as part of our Ascension symptoms, navigating our career slash jobs slash spiritual pursuits, being more present in order to connect with our guides, and incorporating intentionality in order to stay the course in our highest timeline. I'm excited to have you co-create with me today, so let's dive right in. Hello, my dear friends. Thank you so much for hopping on to listen to this episode. There are a few things that have been top of mind for me, and that is what I am planning on discussing today. I did mention those in the opener to the episode. The first one has to do with ongoing ascension symptoms. I still remember like three or four months ago, maybe it was more than that, when my guides came in and said, you remember that if you are experiencing ascension symptoms, that's because you desire to do so. And I was like, wait, what? (laughs) But if we really truly believe that we are creating our own reality, then that means that if we're experiencing ascension symptoms, we are somehow creating that, whether subconsciously or consciously. So it's a very interesting thing to consider. I want you to remember to step into your sovereignty when it comes to your physical experience of ascension and that's really what ascension symptoms I'm talking about and one of the reasons why I am bringing up this topic is because of a couple things one I am personally experiencing it I'm literally sitting down and I'm feeling almost like I took a sleeping potion I just want to fall asleep and so that's one of the reasons the other reason is because several of you in the one-on-ones that I've been doing with my mentorship participants and those who are in multidimensional soul activation have been mentioning the exact same thing. You have let me know that you are going through fatigue. Even my friends uh, have been mentioning the exact same thing. So here's the deal. I've been sitting with this for a little bit and I have a few theories on it. I mean, I would just say that my theories could be little hints from my guides, but also know that there's not just one explanation for the fatigue. Here's what I have tapped into. The thing that is going on for many of us who have contracts to assist Gaia, to bring through codes, to bring through vibrations that will assist in the upgrade for her and for the collective, those of us who have that are bringing in a ton of codes into our physical body. They are being downloaded almost like a computer program on a regular basis. And if you think about a computer, when you overload a computer, it's going to begin to get sluggish. It's not going to work as fast, especially if the processor hasn't been upgraded. And I've talked about this analogy before. Many of you have heard me say it. And so what's happening is we need to remember a couple of things. One, to step into our sovereignty and have a little chat with our guides if we feel like what's happening is a little bit too much of our physical body at the moment. We want to be a little bit more comfortable. So we then need to make sure to mention to our guides, hey, Can you help me out here? This is getting a little much. I'm unable to do my regular daily uh, duties and I need to see if we can maybe just turn down the dial on what's coming through right now. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is obviously to upgrade your processor, right? Ask your guides to work on you at night. I, I tend to work with the Arcturians predominantly and ask them if they can upgrade that quote unquote processor that's inside you that allows you to run more programs. That's another thing you can do. And there's actually one more, okay? This is another thing that came through. There are a lot of codes that you don't necessarily need to keep in your body, in your energy field. Those codes can be transmitted to either Gaia, to other people, depending on what you feel drawn to do. In my case, a lot of the codes that I'm bringing through end up being sent out in my gatherings and in my offerings. And so they end up coming through me and I'm a conduit and I send them out. Other times they might go through me is when I'm just with Gaia and I need to be sending them into the earth and I'm grounding and meditating. So not all of you are doing offerings like I am. And so not all of you are able to send those codes out to other people that way, but you can even send them out at the store. Remember I talked about this in the last episode about Walmart. (laughs) You can be sprinkling the codes everywhere you go. But the thing is, is remembering that not everything that comes through is meant to stay inside of you. 
you can simply be a conduit. So checking in with your guides a little bit more frequently, going into meditation when you're not exhausted, right? The best time is not when you're wanting to take a nap. Even when you take a nap, though, if you're feeling that intention, or if you're feeling the draw to take a nap, you can set the intention. You say, okay, I need to sleep. My eyes are just closing right now. I need to lay down. And when you go lay down, you just say, hey, guides, helpers, anybody who's willing to help, can you please assist me in sending these codes wherever they need to go? Why are these codes coming through you? This is another thing that has come up in a lot of my gatherings. For those of you who have never been to one of my virtual gatherings, I want to extend a special invitation to you. They are incredible experiences. I'm actually having two this weekend. So on Saturday, December 10th, I'll be having a Galactic Federation gathering at 2 p.m. Pacific. And then on Sunday, December 11th, I have my fairies and elementals gathering and dragons have been coming through a ton. So I know dragons will be there. And that will be at 7 p.m. Pacific. So if you come to a gathering, what you'll notice is our guides are often having us participate in different activations for Gaia. And sometimes you might wonder, well, why Why is little old me helping with this? Why can't they just do it? You know what they always say? You have a body and there are a lot of things that you can do that we cannot do. And there's a lot of help that we need from you with bodies. That's why you came here and embodied. And you were some kind of cosmic interdimensional before this or angelic. Because you came down because part of your contract says, you are being asked to do this. I, I agree to do this. And in order to do this, I need a body. So I agree to go down to earth and be born and have a body. And some of you were born, right? And came in right when you were like born out of your mother's womb. Other ones of you, I'm just feeling drawn to say this right now, are walk-ins. And if you don't know what a walk-in is, you can read that on the internet. You can look it up. Dolores Cannon has information about it. Some of the times walk-ins happen because the body is not able to hold your energy yet. And so you kind of, sometimes a walk-in is a partial walk-in because part of you came in at like, you know, when you were born and then another part of you came in a little bit later. Like for me in particular, I feel like part of me came in when I was born And then when I was three, I have this memory where like my awareness was increased rapidly and I believe another part of me walked in at that age. Sometimes I believe when you have like a kundalini kundalini awakening and you have that like fire through your whole body, another part of you walks in. So I believe we walk in potentially in layers because it would literally, uh, our, our physical body wouldn't be able to handle it if all of our essence came through all of our soul that's that's designed to come into this life if all of it comes through all at once so that's kind of an interesting little thing about that but anyhow back to what i was saying about having a body and our our guides are asking us to help them you know co-create with them they have the codes they send us the codes we bring the codes to gaia because we have a body they need to be manifest physically and then sent into gaia or other people in the collective and that's what we can do to stay up, stave off this fatigue that a lot of us are feeling. But most of all, step into your sovereignty, connect with your guides, tap into your inner wisdom and intuition, and make a game plan. And that actually rolls into the last topic I mentioned in the introduction of this episode, and that is being more intentional to stay in our highest timeline. If we are intentional, and that can just mean connecting every so often. Do you know when I connect, this is going to sound really weird to you. I have a very busy life. I do meditate and I often do that right before I go to bed. But another time that I connect and I just sit and take a moment to be present is when I'm driving. I'll often connect with my guides when I'm driving. I turn off all the music, all the input, and I decide to just connect with them then. So that's another thing that you can do is remember to be more intentional. When you do that, you can make those little course corrections that will keep you on that highest timeline. And I'm not saying like there's a, a right path and a wrong path. It's just that you have an intention. You're you're wanting to vibrate at a certain wavelength. And in order to stay on that wavelength, the behaviors and the actions that you're making and taking need to match up with that. And so if some of you are feeling like it's not, it's dissonant there, then that's how you do it. You just continually make those little tiny course corrections Not because you're on the right path or the wrong path. I keep needing to deprogram people from that. There are so many people who are programmed like, what's the right path? I'm like, there's not one, 
right? Like you can have fun. Your timeline can change from day to day. But I'm talking about being in alignment with what the desire of your heart is, okay? And that's how you do it, by being more intentional. In fact, this kind of loops right in and and pushes me right over to the next topic that I want to talk about, which is being present. Because being intentional and being present go hand in hand. It's hard to be intentional when you're not present. When you're floating out there in who knows where and parts of you are all over the place, which we often do because that's one of our gifts as starseeds. We're able to have our presence and our awareness all over the place. But there's times where you need to pull it into this planet, this life, this body. A lot of people have been coming to me for one-on-ones lately and I have been feeling the need that they're scattered all over. And this is just like temporary parts of you that are going off because you're having all kinds of astral experiences, my friends. A ton of people have been telling me, hey, I worked with you the other night. Hey, I saw you the other night when I was in astral, you know, whatever it was. It's happening. It's definitely happening. But in order to truly uh, really have an, an experience that is going to be for our greatest and highest good on this planet, we need to remember to take those moments to be present. And especially as we're coming up here with the holidays for many of you, you're going to be at gatherings, you're going to be associating with family members. I want to invite you and remind you that your experience here on this planet is so unique. And a lot of times we discount the experience we're having as humans. We really downplay what it is. We end up judging it that it's not very valuable because it's stuff that we don't necessarily want to go through. But I'm like, listen, we chose it for a reason. I know we're gonna, in like 200 years, we're going to be like, man, I wish I would have been more present on earth. That was a super unique experience. And you're, you're going to be floating in a spaceship when you think that, right? Like the grass is always greener. You're always like, man, I wish I was in a spaceship right now. I wish I, I, wish I was like a star family right now. And when you're with your star family, you're going to be like, man, I wish I was on earth. I wish I was having that really cool grounded experience on the planet earth again and in a body so just remember that being present is important enjoy this moment okay this is all we have this moment all right the last thing that i want to mention today is something i brought up in the december monthly energy update but guess what it's come up again (laughs) it's come up again it keeps coming up people keep like contacting me and they're like what should i do i don't know what to do and here's what it is okay this is the one about quote unquote 3D jobs. Okay. A lot of people who are have been doing this, you know, jobs or or considering like, oh, I want to do like a healing practice and I want to leave everything else behind. Here's what's been happening. People are hitting roadblocks with doing that kind of thing. And so I've been telling them, I'm like, I really feel like our guides are nudging us into a dual role here where we are to be co-creating in more grounded ways through a quote-unquote regular job and also do our healing practices too. And we have a lot of limiting beliefs that prevent us from thinking that's possible. I'll be completely honest with you, okay? I have some of that experience in my life as, as being in dual roles. I still dabble in a lot of the 3D regular job stuff. But I also have my activations with JJ and I've always wanted to. I don't like being pinned into one thing. I like experiencing all the vibrations. So if you're finding that stuff isn't blossoming for you the way you want it to in just a spiritual like healing practice or coaching realm, I want you to consider the possibility of potentially bringing something else on board. What other things? We're, we're being invited to expand into our multidimensionality. And do you know what spirit says? And you're like, I want to just do energy work. I'm like, everything is energy work. Everything is spiritual. Everything. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're an Amazon delivery person. You're sprinkling everybody's packages with your energy. So I want you to consider that invitation from our guides. Now, that might not be for everyone, okay? But it could be for you. What are you being invited to step into? Our reality is what we make of it. If we keep thinking that a certain kind of job was beneath us, or isn't serving our soul, then that's what's going to happen when you take that job. If we think that that job is going to be a way for us to bring the 5D to the 3D or just expand Gaia and the collective, that's what's going to happen too. You can find it anywhere. It just depends on what you're looking for. So that's my very last topic for this Ascension message. Before I close out this 
particular episode, I want to make sure I mention something super amazing to you. Ah, I'm so excited for it. So on January 7th, I will be in Los Angeles again. So for those of you who are in Los Angeles or who think you want to head to Los Angeles in January, the weather's really nice then. I am doing a, a day retreat. I'm kind of slowly moving into different retreat scenarios. This is a day retreat in the Los Angeles area. It will actually be in Beverly Hills at a beautiful space where we will be doing a goddess activation retreat. It was so interesting because as I was coming up with the idea for this retreat with my amazing friend Queenie, who is with Reiki and Flo, we were talking about it and we were like, okay, we want to do like a sister circle, like a sisterhood, divine feminine. And we kept kind of throwing out ideas. And all of a sudden, as I was going through the plans and the schedule for this gathering, for this retreat, I kept feeling goddesses come in. I'm like, oh my gosh, the goddesses are here. <laughs> and she's like, they are? Yes. And then she started tapping in. We're like, yes, the goddesses are here. And so I started getting names of specific goddesses to bring into this. Each portion of this retreat is going to be led by a different goddess. And we will be channeling these goddesses in tandem at certain parts. And it's, it's, I feel it's going to be very powerful for those of you who are wanting to expand and open your channel more. Now, the interesting thing is, I think one of the precursors to this goddess activation retreat in Los Angeles is that I'm doing my December 21st solstice activation, my solstice activation, where I have also felt drawn to bring in goddess energy. So I really feel like they're going to go hand in hand. I want to invite you to attend either one. I'll put the links below. In addition to that, there are a couple other really fun offerings that I've created for this month. And one of them is my Atlantean group past life regression. I am tapping into that because I'm, you know, going to the future, seeing what that's going to be like. And I feel it's going to be super life-changing for a lot of people. I feel like it's going to be healing, which is interesting because I'm not necessarily intending for it to be like a healing, but I feel like that gathering is going to offer healing to many people. So whether or not you're just curious or you feel very connected to Atlantis, I want to invite you to that Atlantean group past life regression. It's actually happening on the 17th of December, okay? So pay attention to those dates. They're going to be really incredible things happening and it's important for us to gather. So whether or not you attend mine or you attend gatherings from other people, virtually or in person, I want to invite you to continue to gather, to help you not feel so alone, to help you process these energies in a group setting. It's a lot easier when we all shoulder part of it. We found that out in many, many different ways. I did it when, when we did the 1111 portal activation. I really felt that. When we did our multidimensional channeling ceremony in Los Angeles, I felt the same thing. As we continue to gather, this process is going to become easier. We are going to lighten the loads for each other. We all have different gifts and they're complementary. And we need to begin to step out of isolation. That was another theme in December, a monthly energy update. Stepping out of a feeling of isolation and joining with others. This is something we're going to do together for sure. So that is my very last little comment for this episode. Again, I'm so grateful for all of you for co-creating. I'm sending you so much love and reminding you that I am you and you are me and we are we. Until next time, my friends. <laughs>